When we're talking about qualification, when we're talking about salary, when we're talking about job description, when we're talking about experience, isn't it ironic that the first thing that you need to do when you want to go for one of those jobs? What's your name? Angie. Angie hit the nail on the head. No matter what job we go for, it comes down to a staple here and two pieces of paper. Today's talk is about content. What's this? What's the CV? Marketing. What's this? Content, right? You're giving them content. Why would you want to put your whole career and all your experience and everything you're, you're smart at and everything you're passionate about at onto two pages? Imagine if you could walk into somebody's office for the job that you want. We've got people here that do international relations, finance, marketing, business administration. Some of the friends that I made earlier on before we started the, uh, the lecture. Wouldn't it be more interesting, at the very least, if you showed them a 23 second video about everything it is that makes you awesome? Start creating content about your thoughts in this area. I'll give you an example. Scenario A, you go to an interview. You're one of the lucky people where these two pieces of paper get accepted and you get to go to a stage one interview. You sit, you sit across the uh, table from Mr. Bossman and Mr. Bossman says to you, question A, and you give answer A. He says, gives you question B, you give him answer B. C, C, D, D, and so on. And then you leave and you hope that there's something about your personality or something about your attitude or something about your smile that's going to make this guy give you a job, or this lady give you a job. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that that's the world that we live in in 2015. Let me take you to scenario B. This is the way I hustle. Let me take you to scenario B. This is way, the way I see the world today. Mr. Boss Man or Mr. Boss Lady asks you a question, question A. The question is, so, what do you think about the US federal interest rates? And you give the answer. You're meant to give the answer because you're meant to know what you're talking about. But in scenario B, you say, funnily enough, you should ask that question. Here's my opinion. But if you want to know a little bit more, I have a blog of my own, which is myname.com. Or I have a blog, which is myNameInFinance.com. Or I have a Tumblr page. Or I have a medium.com blog. Or a WordPress blog that not only answers your question, with two or three paragraphs about what I think, but I've also gone on the web and grabbed a video from CNN, grabbed a video from Al Jazeera, grabbed a video from Huffington Post, and I've put it together in a little pack, which summarizes what the whole world is saying about this subject. The reason why I've done that is because I care about this subject. I genuinely, passionately, without you telling me, or without you asking me about this, I've already put the answer down here somewhere on the web. When somebody sees that you can do something by yourself, and what results you can get by yourself. As a business person or as a media company, the first thing they want to do is they want to scale it. They want to make it bigger. Because you've shown you can make a small version of it, they want to make it bigger. If an accountancy firm asks you, what's your opinion on the Federal Reserve rate of raising interest rates, and you've already got an example of that that you've created yourself, then they know that if this guy or girl can do it by themselves, then when I bring them into my firm, and I put them in front of my clients, they're ready to rock. I just need to give this person a salary. I don't need to train them to be proactive. I don't need to train them to go and do their own research. I don't need to train them to gather all the information and package it together in a way that somebody can consume it, like their audience or my clients. So even they are looking at scaling you up.